Right, good morning. Welcome. I think the people on Zoom have just been let in the room, so uh, great, to, uh, great to see them all up on the screen there. And they can uh, hopefully see us as well. So uh, perhaps we should give them a wave if you... Uh... That, thank you, people on Zoom, waving back. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> really good. On cue, well done, well done. It's great to, uh, great to see you. We're just about to start our service. Uh, it's lovely to have a congregation in the building. And uh, it is 10.30, so welcome. My name is Peter. I'm uh, the rector at St Andrews here, and it's a joy to be able to welcome you to the building. This is uh, Sue, our church warden, and uh, a big welcome from both of us to this morning's service, especially in light of uh, the news yesterday, which I think has made us all feel a bit uh, heavy-hearted, hasn't it, today? And uh, it's been very difficult to begin to process what that will mean over the next few weeks. But... Um, uh, but we're here today, and we're with each other on Zoom as well. It's lovely to, to see you if you, you're logging in, uh, if you're joining on YouTube. I have to say, I was on holiday last week, and uh, I was able to watch the service engage on my phone on Facebook, and it was amazing. Um, it was a real treat. We were away in Cornwall, and I, I could log in and uh, really enjoyed uh, joining in the service on, uh, on Facebook. So welcome if you're on Facebook and you're uh, listening live now to, to the service. Uh, or YouTube or, um, or Zoom. It's great to have you with us. Uh, lovely to have a congregation, which I'm afraid we won't have a congregation for the next few weeks. Um, the lockdown uh, details are gradually coming out, but um, church services will be put on hold, at least physical gatherings in the building. We will obviously continue uh, on Zoom. We're able to live stream from the building, so they, the live streams will continue, and our 10.30 Remembrance service will be live streamed. We will do something... Uh, which will be live streamed uh, from here in St Andrews. Uh, what we're still unclear about, unfortunately, is the outside act of remembrance at the Lich Gate, which we were planning, uh, and we're going to seek some clarification on that in the days uh, to come. Um, we will um, let uh, you all and the community know uh, exactly what we decide is possible or not possible um, for next Sunday's remembrance service. But we will still hope to stream a 10.30 uh, service here and have a minute silence at 11 o'clock, uh, which will be online. But do join in with that, even if you can't join in in the, in the building. Um, but it's good to be here together. And um, uh, again, there'll be lots of ramifications of, of the month's lockdown, uh, which we will work through in the next couple of days, and we'll let you know uh, what we're going to be doing with things like Toy Sunday and the shoebox appeal, uh, and, uh, and when things restart as well. So um, keep in touch. Uh, but, uh, but keep on trusting and hoping that we have a God who loves us uh, and uh, who wants the best for us uh, and he'll be with us through everything we go through. Um, Sue, I think you've got a couple of notices, have you? Uh, do you want me to do the other uh, light party one? Yes? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah light party. Yes, uh, my little grandson, who's only, what, three and a half months, he sat on Sarah's knee and waved his arm around and enjoyed the light party. So a thank you. Uh, to Serena, Dougie Dug Dug, and that, that was able to go out on, uh, on, Saturday, on Saturday afternoon and, and be uh, really full of fun, full of fun, um, celebrating light and joy. And Dougie Dug Dug has a wonderful way of talking about Jesus while blowing bubbles, which is just amazing, isn't it? Um, also, I think I'm saying that there's uh, the News Extra, the magazine, it is online, but you can have a copy. There are copies uh, in the foyer and magazine people who distribute those, and I think those are ready for you too. So uh, News Extra carries on. That's lovely too. Thank you, Sue. Um, a couple of more things for me. Uh, first of all, say welcome to uh, anyone perhaps joining on YouTube who has received an invitation uh, for the service this morning because we're going to have a, a very short moment of reflection for those who have lost loved ones over the last sort of 12 or 18 months. Um, we're going to um, hear about our bereavement support from uh, Joe and Karen and Viv uh, and then we're going to light a candle which will be lit during the service and then during our intercessions we'll uh, share a special prayer uh, which has been written uh, for those uh, who are struggling with bereavement right now. So um, welcome if you've joined us uh, uh, on YouTube and you're um, joining us perhaps for the first time uh, having received that invitation from us. And finally for me to say that um, we have a, an author in our midst who's here today, which is great, uh, and it's Hazel Hendry. 
Uh, she has written a book during lockdown of uh, her time in Croatia. And it's, uh, it's an action-packed thriller, I have to say. It's, uh, it's really a really fantastic read. Uh, and it's, uh, it's quite harrowing as well, but uh, it explains uh, what uh, ministry Hazel was involved in during uh, the years two, uh, 1991 to 2008. Uh, and uh, we'll hear more about that during uh, the coffee time. I think Hazel's going to come and share one or two things about it. Uh, and Ken and Ann Matthews, who are involved in uh, encouraging Hazel uh, to write the book over lockdown and, and helping her with that, they're going to share one, one or two things uh, during coffee time as well. So lovely to have you with us, Hazel. Uh, and uh, there'll be details about how to purchase a copy coming out uh, in the uh, church email. So I'm going to... Um, uh, hand over to Sue now to uh, begin our opening liturgy. Thank you, Sue. Well, service of uh, morning worship. Isn't it lovely to come and uh, to these familiar words as uh, I greet you? So they, the words will appear on the screen for us this morning. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. <coughs> Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Our theme today, Jesus, our unchanging Saviour. I think you'll find uh, our first song quite poignant. It talks about an eternal, unchanging God and a fragile world. And that's how we sense things at the moment. So over to Phil and Alison. <laughs>
what a lovely way to uh, start our service this morning, reminding us that God is unchanging in spite of all the change that we go through in our world. Uh, one of the changes that we all face is bereavement, and uh, it's my privilege now to be able to welcome uh, Karen, uh, Joe, and Viv, who are going to share something of uh, our bereavement support. I think Karen's going to come up first, if you'd like to come up uh, to the microphone, Karen, and uh, share something of... Uh, how we support the families whose funerals we conduct in terms of uh, our follow-up and uh, our care for them. Thank you. Good morning. Um, the bereavement support team are there um, to, as it says, support people. After the funeral, we make contact with them and we offer simply a listening ear. Um, people are at all different stages in the grief process but we hope just to stand beside them and to pray for them and to listen to them and just be with them and surround them in love. Thank you so much, Karen. Joe uh, also works as a member of the bereavement team. Joe's going to come and share something of uh, uh, her perspective on that ministry. Thank you, Joe. Yes, as Karen said, we support those that have gone through bereavement and had a, had a funeral in the parish, but we also off, offer that out to others who maybe haven't had, had um, aren't within our parish. Perhaps we've got a leaflet out in the foyer where we um, ask people that have gone through a bereavement that perhaps just dropped into the centre so that they can get in touch with us, us if they need to. We have a team of people who are willing to visit and have a coffee with people obviously that's not necessarily the best way at the moment but we'll phone people and have a chat and see what ways we can support them and just signpost them on to perhaps other areas if they need counselling or people in their own area if they're from without with outside the area that we're in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so we're also keen to support those not just recently bereaved, but those who struggle with bereavement for a number of years. And we have a, a group called Living With Loss, which Viv Hutchinson started. Do you, Viv, do you want to come forward and share something of that and uh, how that group has transformed in, in uh, COVID-19 times as well? Well, we haven't been able to meet since March, but we have been in contact with about 10 members of our group uh, we've been doing emails, one-to-ones in the coffee shop. Um, we've been for walks together. And um, it's just lovely that they're able to talk to one another via the email. And now we've actually uh, started telephone buddies where I give them somebody to ring for a fortnight and um, so that they're in touch with one another on the phone um, so we we are keeping in touch with them and we are uh, adding new members to our group uh, if anybody does need that then uh, get in touch with the office and uh, they'll put you in touch with us Thank you, Viv. just while um, uh, Viv comes over to light the candle if I could just say how important it is I think this ministry to support those who are struggling with bereavement um, we recognize it is hard uh, and we want to show love and care, care and concern uh, for all those um, who are missing someone that they love. So we're going to light a candle now just to uh, remember uh, those who we've lost. And that could be all of us. That could be uh, uh, anyone who comes to mind who perhaps you just want to remember before God and give thanks for. And uh, during the service, we'll keep this candle alight and then there'll be a special prayer during the time of intercessions. Uh, perhaps I'll just share a prayer now too. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who we've loved and lost. Um, Father, we remember them before you now and uh, we commit them into your loving arms, knowing that you're a God of grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm to invite uh, Sue de Jong now to continue with our time of confession. We can praise God in our prayers. We can remember loved ones. And uh, an important part of our Sundays, isn't it, is to just come before the Lord to remember those things 
that have gone wrong, to remember our sin. And it's Jesus who says to us, come and repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So again this morning together, let's turn away from our sin. Let's turn to Christ. And together let's confess our sins in penitence and with faith. We say together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I think for many people who are bereaved, the 23rd Psalm is a very special one. And uh, we're going to hear that now, sung the modern version, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me
Uh, we come to uh, the end of our sermon series on Hebrews today, and we're going to have our two Bibles readings now, followed by uh, Peter speaking to us as we bring that to a conclusion at this time of the year. So over to uh, the Spantons for the Bible readings. Thank you. The first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, again starting at the first verse. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are ill-treated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you so much, Paul, for those two readings. And uh, following yesterday's announcement, I've had to rework and rename this uh, sermon. It was called Seven Ways to Worship. It's now called Seven Ways to Worship During Lockdown. And I think uh, Paul is uh, teaching the Hebrew Christians what persevering in their faith and their worship will look like. You may remember from last week, Steve Pittis, a uh, brilliant sermon on uh, Hebrews chapter 12. And it ended, didn't it, with those words, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. 
And chapter 13 follows directly on from that statement. So how we worship God acceptably and reverently is the subject of today's reading. And at a time when we can't sing together, at a time when we're going to be facing not being able to meet together again, well, let's use this opportunity to have a look at how we can worship, what worship can look like. And so uh, there are seven ways, seven verses here, seven ways in which we can worship God uh, without necessarily gathering physically and singing. The first is found in verse 1. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. So we worship by loving our Christian family. Now my uh, natural siblings have a very special place in my heart and in my life. And if either my brother Simon or my sister Katie uh, ever got into trouble or needed something, then I'd be there for them. I'd be there, I'd drop everything because they are family. Well, when we become a Christian, one of the awesome Christian blessings is that of adoption into God's family. We gain spiritual siblings, spiritual brothers and sisters in Christ, and we share a deep bond with one another. And the book of Hebrews says, keep on loving those Christian brothers and sisters. Don't give up. Keep going, even during lockdown. See how you can work out a way to keep on loving your Christian brothers and sisters, even if it's hard, even if uh, people aren't appreciating what you're doing, even if it's costly. Keep on loving them, because that is acceptable worship. And that's what makes God smile. That's true reverence to God when we love a Christian brother or sister. So how can we love Christian brothers and sisters during lockdown when we're restricted in so many different ways? Well, a quick phone call, just to check they're okay, see how they're doing. Uh, perhaps an offer of uh, some shopping. If you're going out, maybe a call to someone to see if they need anything. Even if they don't, it's worth it just to help them know that they're valued and pray for them maybe ask how you can be praying for them are there any particular needs that they have it's been amazing to see home group central on zoom and how many of us have continued to meet and continued to support and share with one another uh, online even in difficult circumstances let's keep going during lockdown keep on loving your christian brothers and sisters Worship will also mean being hospitable to strangers. Verse 2 carries on. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. There's a lovely balance, if you think about it, between verses 1 and 2, isn't there? Verse 1, encouraging us to love and, and uh, share with our, our Christian brothers and sisters. Uh, verse 2, encouraging us not to forget the stranger, not to forget those who are perhaps not involved in church life. I think the uh, free delivered meals scheme that we engaged in last lockdown is a great example of how we showed hospitality to strangers. Most of the people we deliver meals to weren't part of the church. Uh, we never had any contact with them before. They were strangers that we were able to show hospitality to. Now it's too early to say uh, whether we're going to be doing something like that this lockdown. But I love the idea that perhaps one of those people that we delivered meals to was an angel. I wonder if it was you who was delivering to an angel. That's what the verse says, doesn't it? Well, by doing so, some have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Angels don't get much press today, do they? But they are certainly present in the book of Hebrews. They are alive and active. And the clue is, they don't always have wings. So look out, look out. Now we are right to be cautious about strangers, aren't we? When uh, people cold call you, sadly too often it's a kind of scam and it's polite to just uh, ask them to move on. But if we're careful, we can be a real blessing to those people who perhaps we don't know, the stranger. And again, there's an element of persevering in this, isn't it? Don't forget. Don't forget 
hospitality to strangers. I think we easily settle into our patterns of life, don't we? Uh, and our, our boundaries can get sort of smaller and smaller and smaller. Don't forget, Paul says, to look beyond our boundaries occasionally. Don't forget to, to smile at that person uh, who you walk past, who perhaps you've never seen before. We've begun to develop a reputation as a church for being hospitable. So let's not put that aside. Let's not forget that. Let's show love and hospitality to those within our fellowship, but also those outside, the stranger. Thirdly, we're to remember those who suffer. And this is verse 3. It says, Continue to remember those in prison, as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated, as if you yourselves were suffering. Notice there's symmetry here as well, isn't there? We're to remember those who are facing punishment and judgment for what they do deserve, those in prison. And equally, remember to, we're to remember those who are facing suffering for, for something that they don't deserve, those who have been ill-treated or mistreated. And one of the things that characterizes Christian witness over the centuries is this ability to reach out to the suffering, to those on the edges of society, to those in prison, uh, those who are struggling. After the service today, we're going to hear a wonderful example of a woman who spent lockdown recording her memoirs of ministry to people suffering in the country of Croatia during the war there. Uh, Hazel Hendry is going to share something of the provision of God that she saw as she coordinated an incredible 39 lorries, each containing 39 tons of aid for Croatian towns suffering in the conflict of war. It's an inspirational story driven by faith, driven by God, a great example to us of Christian worship as Hazel remembered those who were suffering and being mistreated. And this verse has had profound impact on Christian ministry in prisons. Today, we don't have to be the ones who do the visiting. We can pray for prison chaplains, volunteers, people who are trained to speak to prisoners. And there are many Christian organisations that have been motivated by these verses. Uh, prison Fellowship is one, Prison Hope another. And Alpha have a particular course designed for those in prison. And the verse also refers to Christians who are being persecuted for their faith. This was certainly the case in Hebrews. We know that the Hebrew church were being persecuted uh, quite uh, severely at times. And the plight of many Christians around the world is easy to forget in the comfortable village of Dibden Purley, isn't it? That's why Paul says, continue to remember. Continue to remember. Don't forget them. Don't forget there are others out there who are struggling. And that's why we're going to try and continue with Toy Sunday and uh, the shoebox appeal. We don't know how we're going to work it out, but we won't forget. Just because lockdown has come, we're not going to neglect our responsibilities to those who are struggling, uh, to those in Hope Gardens and to those in Rwanda. Remember those who are suffering. Then fourthly, worship will mean honouring marriage honouring marriage. Verse 4 says, Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Lockdown can be difficult for all types of people, can't it? It can be difficult for people, particularly living on their own, uh, but it can also be difficult for married people. It can put extra pressures on marriages. Now, honouring marriage starts with those who are married. Those who are married will need to honour their marriage. And that starts with honouring your spouse, prioritising them over all other human relationships, giving them the time that they need. It will continue with uh, people who are related to married people. So parents of married couples need to honour marriage, respect this new family unit that's being created, give their married children the space they need to form their relationship and to grow their relationship with their spouse. Parents will need to honour marriage. Children will need to honour marriage too. Children need to support their parents in their marriage if uh, your parents are both still alive. Uh, not to drain marriage of its love, but to encourage them in their love. 
Everyone needs to honor marriage. When marriages flourish, families flourish, and when families flourish, societies flourish. And most importantly, the marriage bed should be kept pure. I think we all know what that means, don't we? The Bible gives the strongest possible warnings against adultery and sexual immorality for good reason. We are sinful human beings. God knows that. And we make mistakes. God knows that too. But mistakes in the bedroom are some of the most costly mistakes that we can make. And God wants to keep us from the hurt and the pain that sexual unfaithfulness causes. But there is good news, and that is that there aren't any mistakes that God does not forgive. We may be forced to live with some of the consequences of our mistakes in this life, but God wants to protect us from the pain and the hurt of sexual mistakes. So let's heed the warning here, but also know that healing is on offer. The word in the final blessing that we read in verse 21 can be translated, God is offering healing as well as equipping. And so whatever we've done in the past that we may be ashamed of, we can know that God will wipe that clean and will forgive and will heal. Honour marriage. Fifthly, worship will mean being content. Being content. Keep your lives free from the love of money, verse 5 says, and be content with what you have. Oh, this is a hard one, isn't it? This is a hard one. But perhaps it's particularly relevant during lockdown. So easy in lockdown to focus on what we can't do anymore, isn't it? We look at all the regulations and the rules. We can't do that. We can't do that. But let's try and practice contentment even in lockdown. Let's try and be grateful for the little mercies, the things that we can do. And let's focus on those. The secret of contentedness is a great secret to learn. It frees us from this constant desire for more and more and more. And it's hard to say, but perhaps that's what we need to focus on during lockdown, is being content with what we do have and what we can do. Here, particularly, love of money is the focus. The US multimillionaire John D. Rockefeller was once asked the following question, how much money is enough? He paused for a moment and he answered as quick as a flash, oh, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. He recognised more than any that however much we have, we'll always want more. So what we need to do is learn to appreciate what we do have and give thanks for that. Worship means be content. Worship means respect your leaders. Verse 7 says this, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. The chapter returns to the subject of leaders in verse 17. It says, Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that will be of no benefit to you. And pray for us. So there you are, you've heard it from me. Respect your leaders, it says it in the Bible. But actually leaders are plural, aren't they? That's a key thing here. Leadership is plural, it's not just me. There's a leadership team here at St Andrews. Ian, our associate minister, Serena, our children's and families minister, our church warden, Sue de Jong. Uh, and our new church warden, John Armitage, who was elected at the AGM uh, a week and a half ago. And this is a timely word from the Lord, actually, because uh, we've recently elected a new PCC, all of whom are church leaders in their own right, an incredible gifted team of people who want to serve you and serve God's church here in Dibden, serve the Lord Jesus with their time and energy. And we thank those who've stepped down from the PCC at the AGM, a particular mention to Mike Gost, to Graham Jones, Alison Olcock, and Charlie Besley. Leaders includes home group leaders, doesn't it? And diocesan leaders, Bishop Tim, Bishop David, and Bishop Debbie, and many more. Leadership is plural, and we do well to respect our Christian leaders and to pray for them because they need it. And I can testify to that. 
Finally, seventhly. We've got through seven points today. Well done. But the last lesson is that Jesus Christ never changes. Verse, th verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. In his commentary on the book of Hebrews, Raymond Brown suggests this sentence is probably the letter's most famous verse. And so if you come away from this series on Hebrews not remembering anything else, do remember this, that in all the change that we're going through, in all the upheaval of this world, we can be assured that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. God is unchanging. He is our anchor in the storm and we can hold on to him. And Hebrews has been a great reminder to us, hasn't it, of this unchanging rock who we believe in, our God, who we put our trust in. Yesterday's news was news we didn't want to hear, wasn't it? More change, more restrictions, more upheaval, more new rules to get our heads around. But actually, it's okay because God is there for us. God loves us. He's done everything he needs to do to welcome us to him. And he will be with us through whatever we go through. And so we've come to the end of this time of the book of Hebrews. And I hope you feel that God has been speaking you to it, has been comforting you, perhaps challenging you. And I hope you've been encouraged to keep going in your faith to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the one who is better than anything else, the great high priest who's gone behind the curtain for you. He's gone into the inner sanctuary for you. He's given himself for you so that you can know God and so that you can enjoy a relationship with Jesus Christ, your anchor who will not change. Amen. a lovely way to end our, our series on uh, Hebrews and uh, we're going to stand together now we're going to say our creed and it's interesting isn't it the focus of the creed very much the person of Jesus Christ God is Father God is Son God is Holy Spirit Jesus is key shall we stand together and let's use the words of our creed we say together I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do take your seats as we focus in again on that person of Jesus. Ros and Steve are just going to lead us into our prayers. Spirit of God, show me Jesus.
Karen's going to come and lead our prayers of intercession this morning. Thank you, Karen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in these times of change and uncertainty, we remember that you are our unchanging God. There are many things on our hearts, and we thank you that we can come to you in prayer. May fear be replaced by your peace. May hearts be stilled to receive your joy. May we walk in the ways of trust, with faith in your plans and your provision. As our country prepares for another national lockdown, we pray against the further spread of COVID-19 and ask that all measures to reduce infection rates would succeed. We pray for your healing and wholeness for all who are affected by the continuing pandemic and pray against the fear and insecurity that this situation brings. We ask that you would strengthen and protect all those working in the NHS and the key workers who provide for essential needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of peace, we remember those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We hold before you all who are struggling in life, the lost, the lonely, ill or troubled, and ask that you would grant them your comfort and healing. Be with them, we pray, and may your peace abide in their hearts. We pray for your world for those who live in fear for their lives and for refugees who have lost everything they know. Lord, our hearts are broken to hear of the Kurdish Iranian family who died in the channel and others who have perished at sea, trying in desperation to find a better life for themselves. We pray for the people of France, just beginning their own lockdown and for all those affected by Thursday's stabbings inside the Notre Dame Basilica in Nice and the recent shooting in Lyon. We remember the victims of the earthquake which struck off the Aegean coast and all those affected by the typhoon in the Philippines. We pray for all the troubled areas of your world, Lord, and the millions known and loved by you who live in the day-to-day grip of hardship and poverty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we remember world leaders and pray for all in positions of authority. We ask especially that you would transform the hearts and minds of those who seek leadership in the forthcoming American presidential election. Make them thirst for your righteousness. Grant them integrity that your truth would prevail. We pray for your church, Lord, both here and around the world. Grant unity and harmony that we may keep on loving and upholding one another as brothers and sisters, especially in these difficult times. We pray for Peter, Ian, Serena, and all who minister to us in this parish and ask for your blessing on the preparations for Remembrance Sunday. We thank you for the joy of our links with India and Rwanda. Grant protection on your people that communities there may be strengthened in the bond of your unchanging love. Finally, As we remember today those dear ones who have gone before us, a special prayer of comfort for those who have been bereaved. Heavenly Father, we all have our memories, memories that we treasure, memories that are special, memories that disturb. 
Some comfort us, some make us smile, and others make us cry. When grief or sadness threaten to overwhelm us, remind us, Lord, that to you we are cherished, precious, and loved. Comfort us, we pray, and take our hand in the darkness so that we may walk into the future with you. Amen. Thank you, Karen. And a prayer that we can all say together this morning, our morning collect, which will appear on the screen. We pray this together. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And bringing our prayers together, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now the Needham family are going to lead us in our final song this morning. Jesus, my King, my wonderful Saviour. Jesus, my King, my wonderful Saviour, all of my life is given to me. Now I am living in your preservation, your precious blood is making me free. Wonderful Saviour, wonderful Saviour, you are so near, so precious to me. Wonderful Savior. 
to the end of our service we're going to share the grace together i'm reminded that there's people watching on zoom on youtube on facebook and we are gathered here would you like to stand and we can actually look round at one another can't we a little bit as we share the grace together so we say the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen Amen. You might like to take your seats. Uh, there's an instrumental now from Val and her son, uh, Josh. It's chance if you do feel that you'd like to go now, you need to go, then please do feel free. Otherwise, let's enjoy this together before we chat. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's uh, time for uh, church family time, for coffee time. If you're at home, you may have uh, made yourself a brew. We're very jealous here in church, <laughs> uh, sat, uh, sat here, but, uh, but it's good to be here. And uh, we're lovely to uh, hear any news of what you've been up to during, uh, during the week. Have you been away? Have you been at home? Uh, have you got wet in the weather? Um, and there's lots on the chat already. We're going to hear from Hazel in just a moment as well. Uh, someone's birthday today it's my daughter's <laughs> birthday today lucy is 11 today which is quite scary but, um, but happy birthday lucy and um, nice uh, i can't quite see who put it on the chat but um but that's nice uh, and it was celebrated in zone 66 oh, nice. um, the uh, children's group meeting uh, uh, virtually there we go uh, and uh such a lovely sound soprano sax yeah it was indeed thank you for the service today so apt uh, unable to attend a family funeral later this week from Pippa uh, would have involved an overnight stay and not possible to travel and back mm. on the same day. Uh, we're mm. sharing that sadness with you, Pippa, today. I'm sure there'll be uh, others in that situation as well. Um, well is that great some news good news about Ben? On is that? Ben, yeah. yeah. Do you want to Happy to say, following Ben's recent full body CT scan, all of these trips to P and Brown Ward are proving worth it. Results were very encouraging tumours having shrunk to a tiny percentage of their original size. Wow. <laughs> That's 
fantastic, lovely. We rejoice with you, Susie, in that, and uh, love to Ben. There was a great photo of Ben on, uh, on Facebook uh, in the week. Lovely to see him uh, up and about, and, um, uh, and that's really good news. We give thanks for that. And I did hear that the, uh, is it, uh, Ros Reed has made uh, from, uh, pieces of material for Rwanda, because I guess they were out there, um, a quilt for Ben, I hadn't realised. So a really colourful quilt, so a lovely, lovely thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Be great to get a picture of that actually. It to would, show wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yeah. I saw it in the uh, in the making, and yeah. uh, uh, but it'd be nice to see a picture of it. Good. So I think um, we're going to invite Hazel up actually, if that's okay. <laughs> Hazel, are you okay to come up and stand at, at the microphone? Is that all right? This is the uh, the book. If you can see that uh, has just been published, and is now available. And Hazel's going to tell us a bit about the story of, uh, well, the book, or, or I don't know, what, how, how are you going to compress <laughs> uh, 17 years into a few moments? But, but Hazel, it's lovely that you were able to do this. I know that Ken and Anne uh, played a part in just spurring you on uh, to get it done. I know it's something you mentioned to me a long time ago, but lovely that this has now come to fruition. Thank you. Uh, and we pray that it would be a blessing to many, to our church family and to others, to see, see your inspirational example. Thank you. Just, just give us a few highlights, yes. Hazel. Of, uh, yeah. Well, the war actually only lasted for about five, uh, six years. But the people over there, because the country was totally destroyed, they needed help in every way I could possibly get. But it was George Hoffman, who was a personal friend of mine, and Pauline, his wife. He was actually in Croatia when it started, the war started, and he phoned me, and he, all he said was, during conversation, Hazel, the people in Croatia need your help. So after I put the phone down, I prayed to the Lord and I said, okay, Father, I will do it, but you must give me everything I need. You must provide it all because I can't see how I will get the things they need. And the Lord did in abundance, so much so that the Royal Air Force gave me a hanger to store all the, the items that were given to me. And it constantly em emptied. I sent over 50 lorries in the end. But the war was not a nice war. It was um, quite evil. Because Serbs could be living next door to Croats. And they would kill them. Um, um, you could have a Croatian village. And the next one would be a Serbian village. The Croatian village, everyone would be killed. The Serbian one would be left standing. The Chetniks, as they were called, were pretty evil people. I was at risk. The um, British Army Intelligence contacted me, and they said they knew what I was doing. Would I help them? And so I did, putting myself more at risk. But it was necessary because some of our soldiers were over there. But um, if you read my book, it isn't, it isn't for children to read, because it will explain to you about... Um, people being dead and finding mass graves and being invited to see people who'd been killed, seeing people who'd been injured severely and seriously. Um, their pain was with me the whole time. But the Lord, um, he, he looked after me and I, one thing I was sure of was in an evil war where bombs were whizzing around my ears and shells were be, being dropped around me, I would get home. He wouldn't have given me the job to do if I was going to get killed over there. But I have to tell you that um, the one person I met um, while I was over there, his name, he was a pharmacist, and another one, uh, Frano Matasinovich, he was a senior pharmacist, and Dr. Skugo was a junior pharmacist, and Darko became my translator. So everywhere I went in that country, he would go with me so that I always found out what... Um, was going on in the area where I was. The one place we both found, um, which was, because I worked on the Bosnian-Croatian border, it was totally frontline work. But Laszlovo was um, one of the villages that I went to help. And the fruit was on the tree, but all the houses and people had been killed. Um, I was warned not to go near the grass because um, landmines were put everywhere, still a danger to people. Um, the, um, I can only, well, you can tell by how I'm talking, it wasn't a pleasant experience, 
but it was given to me by the Lord. And all I can say to you is this. If you think the Lord is telling you to do something, just do it. You may not think you're the person that would normally be expected to do the work. I didn't. I'm ordinary. There's nothing special about me. Why the Lord chose me, I don't know, but he did. And I did his work to the best of my ability. I can still cry tears for those boys that got killed because it was a whole generation of young men that got killed. Um, I recently went over there. I was invited to a wedding. The Croatian army heard I was there. Unfortunately, they took me to more mass graves and um, more graves where photographs were over all of them, of boys 15, 16, 17. It just broke my heart. But I have to say thank you to two people in this in the room today. When the pandemic started, um, Anne and Ken Matthews knew I had got journals and photographs of this war. Anne phoned me up and she said, all she said to me was, Hazel, could I type your journals for you? Ken got involved and between them they <laughs> decided that I should write a book. So all the words in this book are mine and all the photographs are mine, but Ken and Anne put it in the order in which it should be written because I don't know how Anne managed because lots of it was written on scraps of paper but I kept a journal every single day I was there so that people in the country could be told what was going on. I have to tell you my life was at risk and when this book is published in Croatia I will still be at risk when I go over there because the Serbs did all the damage and it's in print but the ambassador um, Andrea Kriakovic he wants this book to be published in Croatia. We'll have to wait till the pandemic's after. But um, I can't go on any, um, anymore. <laughs> I feel quite nervous about it. So thank you for listening to me. And thank you, Peter, for asking me. Hazel, thank you so much. Should we give Hazel a round of applause? <laughs> Isn't it incredible what you find out about people, members of your church congregation, that you never knew? Um, and it's been wonderful to hear that and uh, even better to, to read the book if you manage to get hold of it. I don't know if, um, uh, Ken, you want to say anything or add anything, um, but it might be worth saying that, that you yourselves felt prompted by, by the Lord to actually uh, support Hazel in that. And, and it was a sort of very much a spiritual thing that, that you, you felt the nudge. And uh, so it's a rather lovely connection there, isn't it, that, that Hazel herself has mentioned that that encouragement if you feel god prompting you to do something do it i love love that and uh, you may not know that hazel was uh, nominated for european woman of achievement in 1999 as a result of all the, the work she'd done um, so incredible example to us hazel and uh, we're really grateful to have you as part of the church family um, and uh, pray that this book would uh, bless many people uh, and work for peace uh, and for those who are suffering thank you A lovely question from us. I think you prompted that question from uh, How do we get a copy of the book? Yes, if you check the um, church family email there are, uh, and the newsletter, uh, there are links to Amazon, to how to get it from Amazon. Uh, Hazel herself does have copies, but I think in lockdown situation we're going into, it may be more complicated to start exchanging copies. Uh, but Hazel does have some uh, available, and her phone number, I think, is, uh, is on, on the newsletter as well. But there are Amazon links um, to, uh, to, uh, also to the publisher. So um, thank you, Nicky and Phil, for a good prompt of a question. Great. We're going into um, Zoom groups, uh, in, sorry, into um, uh, uh, small groups on Zoom in uh, just a moment. Uh, but it's probably worth the congregation here just giving a wave. Uh, you can see the congregation camera there. Should we wave to the people on Zoom and perhaps Zoom could uh, wave back? Uh, great to uh, see everyone. Wave goodbye to the live streams as well, Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us online, particularly if you joined for the first time. Uh, great to have you with us. Um, thank you for being here in the building. And um, in a moment, those on Zoom should receive uh, an invitation to go into your breakout groups. Uh, but lovely to share in this time this morning. Thank you.